Does anyone uh, rinse the uh, cotton out there? Can All right. Rinse? Six o'clock, we'll do uh, Pledge of Allegiance at the other meeting, so we'll just call this meeting to order. Can you take roll call, Teresa? Yep, Mayor Jones. Here. Brenneman? Yep. Seal? Here. O'Hara? Here. Walslayer? Here. Matson? Here. And Jess? Here. All right, do we have uh, approval of the agenda for this information session? So moved. And do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Overview of project delivery methods. I'm assuming that's going to be you, Mr. Dockstead, or? Well, because you only show up when you're either asking for money or something, right? Missed a couple line items on our. <laughs> um, overall, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna really set the tone of what I want to work through, okay. and then I'll actually let the the folks that um, that can handle more of that actually delivery on what we're gonna go over. So. So the, the, on the water rec facility, what we want to discuss is the actually delivery method. So um, you can see those, the handout is really all that we're gonna go over. Um, but since it's a working session, it doesn't have to be so formal like a council meeting. If we're going through something and you have a question, just seriously stop us, we'll walk through it. Um, because I know that this is a little bit different. Some folks have probably been exposed to some of these different delivery methods and kind of the strengths and weaknesses of each one of them. But that's really what we want to do is we want to go through those so that you guys can make the best decision for, for you and this particular project. Um, the, the great part in, in my mind is, is frankly the, the state of South Dakota allows you to use more than one delivery method. Plenty of states only have the design, bid, build um, uh, model allowed by public law and the fact that you have some options here uh, is pretty great so you can kind of evaluate what you really think is the strength for this particular project. Uh, we really only evaluate this for larger projects too. Um, the, the larger projects really are where you need to facilitate some of that discussion, um, which where there's advantages, I should say, for facilitating some of that uh, uh, conversation early and often um, in that construction and design process. So. I'm gonna turn it over to the team members, and you're probably not all aware of the team members that we have here, but Richard Kloos is our one of our water wastewater group leaders. Michael, you all know Michael. Um, and John Glico, he's actually on our project delivery team. Uh, he's a project manager for us. Um, and actually came from the construction side, actually working a little bit uh, on the, the CM for sure yep. uh, side, so understands that particular model as well. Um, but will it be involved on either way that we pick? Um, he will be a project manager, project manager for this particular project. We involve our project manager team when we have vertical disciplines, is what we call them. When you have a structure, you're going to have mechanical and electrical and structural and architectural all involved on a project. That's when we actually bring in our our own project management team. But he does have experience in the construction management industry, actually with a contractor, a, lo a local contractor here as well. So. I'm going to turn it over to you, John, unless there's anything else you wanted me to cover. No, that'd be perfect. I'm just going to go ahead and move up here so you guys can see my face here real quick so I can see you as well. <clears throat> so you all have the handout in front of you. Uh, I'm not going to go through and read each of the paragraphs. I'll kind of give a brief overview of each of the delivery methods. And then if you have any questions as we're going through, just go ahead and stop me at any point in time. And if there's any follow-up questions after you have some time to chew on the material, just send them our way and I'm more happy to follow up in any way. So, well, one thing I do want to point out right away is the design build method won't work for what this project in particular, but we left it on here just for future knowledge moving forward with any future projects. So just keep that in mind. So the first tab there, the design bid build, this is your very standard delivery method. It's been around tested it's true it's essentially the governing body contracting with an architect we're going through the whole process designing everything and then once we have final construction documents um, you will then find a construction manager to work with and at that point in time the owner which is yourselves would be contracted with the architect and the engineer and then also with the general contractor 
and the general contractor, and this is the kind of the important part of the design bid build, isn't brought on until design is complete. And so you would go out to bid with the, the general contractor and they would come back with their bids and you would select who you'd want to work on the project and then it would go into construction. Okay, so that's typically when you see those projects, you're working on a longer timetable where it's not an aggressive schedule. If you're working over multiple years, that's a lot of times what you like to see there. That way there's a lot of owner, architect correspondence, owner, engineer correspondence, so we can really make sure we're capturing exactly what is needed for the owner, okay? That's kind of the, the brief overview of design bid build. Any major questions on that? Just right off the cuff. And that's the standard that you've done on every project. So any street project, water main project, you know, all your designers working with you on that design and really encapsulating encapsulating what exactly you want and putting that to plans and then sending that out, you know, literally sending that out to the group, they're sending back bids, and then you're evaluating that bid based on lowest responsible bid. So in the inflationary situation we're in right now or possible recessionary, and we could ask this about any of them, but I'll just ask it now. Is there one that's going to give us a better handle on that costing piece? Yeah, yeah. So, so you're not really having the. So, when we're putting together estimates at that point in time, we're getting information from vendors. We're getting information from contractors. We're reaching out and <coughs> talking to them about different alternatives. You know that we're evaluating in regards to the technology. Um, different construction types, things like that. So we're getting some of that information. We also have a book of, um, significant book of, of bid projects, so that we're basing that off of past history. But that's where the inflation gets a little bit squirrely on us, right? So we've got this past history, but is that really taking into account kind of the volatility moving forward? Um, but there's really not that formal sit down that you're going through that with a contractor because you're really not sharing that information until the design is 100% complete. Um, so I think, the, it, I will say that we've seen more move towards the, the, the right side of the page to truly have more of that dialogue earlier um, with the CMs to have that discussion and say, okay, when we're evaluating these alternatives, what are you seeing in the marketplace? Um, what do you think are the things that are more volatile. There's, there's plenty of projects that are going in right now that frankly, the way they've been constructed, <coughs> the way they've been designed has been influenced by uh, availability of materials and the construction prices that are probably not, not as standard for that typical type of project. Mm -hmm. There's some vertical construction that we've seen that's gone concrete where it would have typically been steel. I mean, it's just been naturally have been steel with steel prices escalating. We've actually had that input from the CMs and, and modified that kind of type of design and said, no, we're gonna go um, on the concrete side just purely because we know that it's less volatile than the steel market. Yeah. And it's also, worst case scenario, we never wanna to get to that point too, but it's also the, the bad news never gets better with age aspect of it, right? If you have a CM early on and you have, everyone's been working off a set schedule in mind, well, if there's material lead times that will just, if there's physically no way that that's going to happen, you find that information out sooner rather than later. Okay. Okay. We'll jump over the design build aspect for right now, as it wouldn't be pertaining to this project. If we want to come back to it, just let me know. Construction management, as an agency. So this is where you would engage a construction manager around the same time as you would engage an architect and engineer. It doesn't really matter, I've seen it multiple ways, whether it's not the architect and engineer is kind of selected first and then the CM or vice versa. The important thing to note here is that it is still separate contracts, right? So the owner would still contract with the architect and engineering firm and then also contract with the CM. The thing to note here is that the owner would still be responsible for going out 
and soliciting bids to all the subcontractors. So you would be holding all the contracts for all the subcontractors out there. The CMS agent is not able to hold any of those contracts for Code 5 law. And they cannot self-perform any work on the project. And that can be kind of a sticking point for some CMs, especially local to the area. A lot of the construction management firms like to have some sort of a self-perform capacity. So just keep that in mind. But then, again, like we touched on, with this method and also the method that we're going to touch on next, the, the biggest benefactors is bringing them early on to where you can start reviewing schedule and you can start reviewing budget and you can have those milestones every so often, <coughs> is it every three months, is it every six months, depending on overall project length, but you can just solidify that everything is moving and on track and there's not going to be any major hiccups along the road. And like uh, David had touched on earlier, there's been a big swing locally and nationally kind of moving from that standard design bid build over to the CM either as agent or at risk. It's kind of just a swing that's been happening. So, any questions on the agency aspect? How many subs are we going to need for a project? You're going to need, just off the cuff, I can throw a number, don't hold me to it, but I would say you're probably looking at about, I'm going to say anywhere from six to nine, somewhere around there. And it, it really just truly develops. It depends on who the subcontractors are. Some can handle more scope, more of what's going into the project than others can. So it kind of, it kind so of depends. So we'd be going out to bed for six to nine? Potentially, yes. Yeah. Correct. And the thing with having the CM as agent, they can, if you contract with them and in your contract, they can handle the bidding process, right? They can help you put together the documents. It's just officially the contracts will be through you. So the construction manager could, in their scope, say we're going to actually manage this project. If, it's, if the subcontracts are with us, mm -hmm. we don't have anyone allocated their time isn't allocated to overseeing and managing the project, the construction manager is still ultimately responsible for performance. Yes, they just will. just can't do the work. Correct, they cannot self-perform, but they will still have the general conditions of the project, right? So they can have a trailer on site, they will be managing, they'll have, you know, they'll get the toilets lined up, they'll get temporary internet out there, they'll handle the subs, make sure that they're building per um, the design documents. So they will still manage the overall project. They just can't perform or hold any of the contracts legally. So jumping ahead maybe a little bit, then the difference between that and the at risk is that we make a choice on the contract or will we always make the choice on the subcontractor or if we go to an at risk, do we lose control of who's selected? So I believe, and this would have to kind of be ran through through the state to just verify, but I believe the way it is in South Dakota is that the CM at risk, it still has to go through the public bidding process. Correct. Yeah. And they still have to prove that they go through the bidding process. So even if they're gonna, let's, let's say you kind of lean all the way to the right and you go to the CMAR. You're still, they're gonna still have to prove that they got multiple bids on each section, especially if they're self-performing, is they're gonna have to bid against competition. So it, it proves that maybe they're gonna put together a plan to self-perform, but they actually have to prove that they were still the most responsible bidder. Um, and that's how the state is allowing you to go through CMAR, but not just selecting a contractor and say, hey, go do this project, um, because their concern is then is the is the the benefit of the citizen. Are you selecting that's not not based on on lowest responsible bidder? And they want to ensure that. So each one of those sections is still going to be bid. You're still going to be able to review that in an open book um, policy that you can review those bids to ensure that that's that's done. The the nice thing is there's there's still plenty of questions that can go back and forth to ensure that. They're bidding apples to apples and things like that. So, um, but there is definitely that level of 
clarity that you can kind of hang your hat on that. They, they're still going to need to uh, prove that they did, they did go through that process. But that's a really good question. And the way they're kind of, let's say, held a little bit too is when you go the at-risk route, the majority of the time it's under a guaranteed maximum price or GMP as it's referred to. And so if, when they're brought on, they will at one point in time during, and this is something that is set in the contract, so it would be negotiated, but at some point in time through the design process, they have to provide a GMP to you. And so that's them saying with what they know at where the design documents are at date, the cost of construction will not cross over that dollar amount unless there is a change order. But if it crosses over that it's not a change order, that dollar amount is the responsibility of the construction manager and not of the owner. And so that GMP, when that's established, that's giving them a reason to make sure that they're going out and getting multiple bids because they want to have an aggressive bid from all their subcontractors so they know they're getting an accurate number and the best number they can get because if it comes in high, then they're stuck holding the bid. So. Which one of the two does the engineer and the construction manager work together the most? It would Honestly, it's, it's the both. For, for, for the construction management agent and construction manager at risk, they're both, at both instances, let's just say for example, you bring on an architect and engineer and a couple months down the road you engage with the construction manager and get them brought on. It's the same amount of collaboration and coordination throughout the whole process. But that, that's really the, the big difference between the at risk and the agent is that there's the GMP established at some point in time during the design process. And then the contracts are held through the construction manager and they're responsible for the price. So if you set that guarantee, he gets the project in 15% below that, that's it, correct? No, I believe that it goes back to the owner. Are they incentivized? How are they incentivized I, other than just right. the contract? I think that's through negotiation in the contract between okay. yourself so and the construction. If he comes in 15% under, maybe it's 50-50 or 20. Right, that's why I was curious and, because and it, and and there's got to be something in it for him or why would he? And you know. I, I, would, I would check and make sure that there is, that if there was a certain that ARPA would allow it, that where the funds are coming from also allow there to be uh, allocation made if they were to come in under you. I'm not sure if that's okay. the case. Because they're, they're really, you know, the, the state, and ARPA and NSRF are, are trying to really have it so that you're, they're paying what you're, you're paying for what you get, yeah. right? So they want to ensure that, that they're, that the citizens in, in general are, and, if it's SRF, the feds are not paying additionally for some level of an arbitrary incentive, right? So, so there's definitely language that we'll look at when they when they submit that contract, the CMAR, to ensure that that passes through uh, DA and R. And we and we'd still out of any of these, you know, your design bid build process of selecting the contractor is bidding. I mean, that that really is it. Yeah. Um, uh, the CM agency. That's where you're going to sit down and you're going to interview various uh, construction managers and the same with construction manager at risk. That is the nice thing is that you're getting to select really who you're working with. Design bid build, uh, it, it, it sounds bad, but um, publicly bid projects, we have to take, I always say that those stupid words over and over again, lowest responsible bidder, because that is what we're held to. Um, if they're a responsible bidder and they're low, we have to take them. Um, so that, that's the nice thing on the CM side, that there is more of a selection process that you get to go through. You get to interview them. You get to walk through. You get to walk through their, <coughs> their safety. You get to walk through, you know, frankly, their, their percentage that they're going to be looking at. Because mm -hmm. on, the, on the CM side, there is, there is some level of effort that they're doing up front, too. So there is a compensation for that. So there is a percentage that they're going to want 
if they're going to handle that construction manager. But really what they're doing is they're handling your subcontractors. They're handling all that for you. Um, in the in the in the percentages that are different between the two. Yes. So when you say self-perform the term self Yes, yes sir. Yep. Does that mean doing work? Doing one of the correct, yes sir. So company so, XYZ might be the construction manager a CMA and they can't do any work on a project other than consult or manage. Correct. Consult and manage. Yep. Yes. But on yep. the at risk they had their own construction crew, they could use their own people and do work. They're as long as everybody else. But they got a bid? Yes, they still have to yeah. bid it. And it, but it allows them to. It allows them the opportunity to win the work, yes. So are there companies out there that only do construction management? There, there are, yes. Okay. There are companies that do only construction management and actually prefer it. And you'll see sometimes that there's CM firms that prefer the agency and they'll actually end up after after going through the process, well then another popular CM firm will actually be hired by them to do some of the self-perform and kind of lower level management. But yes, there are firms out there. Krauss Anderson um, up from the cities is a larger one that does a lot of the agency work. Anybody around here that does both? Not that I'm right off the cuff I'm familiar with. The majority of them kind of lean towards the at risk. Most of them are wanting that opportunity to sell. That's what I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. the, the reason they prefer that is it allows them to control the schedule a lot more. So it's, it's beneficial for the owner in that respect. Now they are also, you know, they'll be getting additional fee for that work. And so it's obviously more lucrative for them to self-perform. That's why a lot of them prefer it. But a big driving factor is they can drive the schedule. That's why if you look at a lot of the crews that do self-perform, they're self-performing some aspect that is typically critical path on a schedule, whether it's concrete or the main structure of the building, let's say steel or precast. They're typically erecting those or doing that work because that's typically at the very front end. That's what's going to either delay your project right away or get it off to a good start. And so that's why they prefer to do it they can throw more people and more hours at it a lot quicker than they can ask a sub-consultant to do it. So who locally does the address? Who would be, who would be in the name of Journey, Journey would probably go for it, Gail Haugen. Well, and this kind of comes back, I don't, you have to find one with water wastewater mm -hmm. capacity. And I, I think McCarthy is making a local yep. presence. And so they're doing the, the city of uh, Sioux Falls is wastewater treatment plant. They're, they have a waste, water wastewater division. Yeah, and they're, they're self-performing a portion of that work. Uh, yep. That is CMAR. Yep. Um, but uh, Journey Wood, especially with some of their, their uh, West River operations, they have done some water and water. Um, actually, the the Harrisburg plant was CMAR with Henry Carlson. And they had, they went in on a joint venture with mm -hmm. an out of state mm -hmm. firm, which that, that happens quite a bit too with a, a yeah. firm that may not have that capacity. But we, if you want to keep, you know, it local, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Or yeah. that, or not even maybe the capacity, but expertise. Expertise, yes. Yep. 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 That's what I meant. Yes. Yep. 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 Correct. <laughs> Because again, you can't specify that, but that's you know that's a design. That's, that. that's open to them, yeah. yeah. And yeah. In, and I would do it. I, I would do it pretty uh, similarly. Um, I would go to people. You know, I, I would go to locals and see what their interest is. I would put it. And I would go to like the McCarthy's yeah. of the world. The the one that's on Harrisburg P K G. Yeah, they're North, North Dakota. Dakota. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a. I think really we have a list of probably five that are very specific to water wastewater that I think would be worth more. Because remember, there's a you can do CMAR and you can not self perform anything. Mm -hmm. Correct. True. And there's plenty of firms if they're going to travel, they might not do much. They might do rough carpentry on this one. So right. a lot. There's right. something really small, but they have a trouble filling in a gap or. Or they don't feel like they're getting receptive bids from the local environment. They may very well say, "Hey, we can bring in a crew for two weeks and, and do that ourselves." Frankly, right. 
And, yeah, and they don't necessarily have to, I get that, but it gives them the option to. It gives them the option. Versus yep. being locked out on a yep. Yeah. yep, completely agree. And for, I don't have a vast experience in the water wastewater industry, but from what I've seen, I know the water wastewater construction management firms that are geared towards that typically are always going to lean towards the at risk because a majority of the water wastewater work they perform in house. There's some real specialized. Yeah. You, you know, it's. Especially that mechanical piping and, and, and some of those particular structures that will be on this and in installing some of that equipment. They've got equipment installers that are, are very well versed in, in the, those type of technologies. And remember, I mean, the plant that we're designing, I mean, we're, we're really relying on the bugs to take, take care of, you know, really doing the heavy, the heavy lift on the treatment process. So it has to be set up very specific. So there's an individuals that have a significant experience setting that up in the right form or fashion. And yeah, I know it's kind of a lot of information and there's quite a bit in front of you, so like I said, feel free to chew on it and anything that comes up, shoot it our way as far as questions and happy to answer. So you mentioned a couple of times that you set that guaranteed price. So when does that Play. That, that is actually in the negotiation mm -hmm. of the contract when you actually want to set that. Um, it, it, it's typically it's a balancing act a little bit. Yeah. I'll let you. Yeah, I would say it's a balancing act. But the, the, the further you let it get down the line, the more confident they are in with, yep. with it. So um, I will say that they're, they're probably willing to take um, more risk the further you go down the design process less risk that they're gonna to try to push back on you if you wanna, you know, yeah, the, push it. Yeah, the earlier you see it established, the larger percent you'll see allocated to allowances and contingency. And okay. as it moves down the line, those percentages will shrink. shrink. Yeah. Right. But remember that uh, throughout the process, they're gonna be giving you at each level from an SD, a DD, and a CD level, they will be updating all of those numbers each time that they do that. Um, so that's that's the nice part, is very early on, they're gonna give you a take of like, okay, this is what you think it is, this is where we think it is, and then we always like to see that then they're coming up with ideas to continue <laughs> to shrink that, but it's not always the case. But um, we like to see that continue to shrink as we get closer to the CD. And that's construction documents, construction document phase, right? So we want to see that thing kind of tighten up where they're taking, they're taking additional risk on, but really it's because they're more certain of exactly what you're doing, you know, as you go along mm -hmm. and the selections that you've made. And because there's plenty of the stuff that up front, they're going to have a lot of assumptions here. You say, well, this is what we assume, this is what we assume, this is what we assume. And if you go this direction or this direction, that's going to impact it. You know, this piece of equipment. If you go this, you know, with this brand, you're going to go up 20 percent. This brand down, you're going to go down 20 percent. So they let you make some of those decisions along the way, which is that is one. I mean, frankly, one really nice aspect to it is you're getting feedback as you design, right? So that's uh, naturally on our vertical projects. That's weird. The, I don't know the last project that we did. That was a two hundred million dollar project that we did design bid build mm -hmm. because you 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 don't want bid day to come and if there's selections to be made you want to do that in advance so that's where we push some of these larger projects it's probably this direction so that we're working through some of that decision making process. When did this project become two hundred million? Overnight. I can stick my guarantee on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a guarantee. I might jump in. <laughs> so the great, the, I assume the greatest risk is where we see the greatest potential for cost containment and management. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and there's still going to be things that they're going to be they're going to be higher level, and we want them to work a little bit of that, you know, that that higher contingency up front because there is volatility, mm -hmm. right? 
So we want them to be a little bit more conservative up front. And then we, when we get closer to, to truly bid day, because there's still a bid day on, on yep. CM at risk, um, but that's when they're locking in the subcontractors. The other really cool thing that we can do with um, the CM model in general, which is different than design bid build, you could do it in design bid build, but it gets really complicated, is let's say that there's a really volatile item. So you're doing an arrow model system. If we could more than likely lock in the actual Aeromont package earlier. So we could get, let's say that we have a really good divine schedule, we've outlined a schedule to you already. If we want to lock that in at an earlier basis, as soon as we get exactly what we want from that aspect, but maybe we don't have the lit station done or the, the collection system done, <coughs> that doesn't mean that we couldn't lock in that package at that point, right? Which is, which is pretty great. Now you could technically on the design bid build, you could bid, bid in packages, it's just, it's a lot more clunky. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty difficult at that point in time. Because then, then you're gonna, if you're gonna lock in packages, you're gonna lock in separate contractor, contracts with separate general contractors. And then you're gonna have to have clear defined, you two are gonna work to, it, it, gets, it gets cumbersome. Yeah, you know, my understanding is some real issues currently are cement. Cement itself. Mm -hmm. Cement color. Mm -hmm. it's Unavailability. Yeah, availability of that is restricted currently. It's kind of tight. Mm -hmm. Copper, on the other hand, is. is my house. <laughs> <laughs> copper, on the other hand, is trending downward. Some so copper we bought in the fall of 2020 is averaging 18 cents a foot cheaper currently. So we're, you know, at certain costs. Inflation mm -hmm. and items, those are currently moving. Mm -hmm. There's volatility too. Yeah. There's a volatility too. I mean, if you if if you want to pull up a crazy uh, a crazy graph, pull up the the lumber exchange on where lumber prices are at, and I mean, it's a it's a that becomes the CM's job. Yeah, that they're tracking. Like if I'm watching for a low do. flight price when I think it's the best I'm <laughs> exactly. going to get or that I'm willing to wait for, I take yeah. it. Yes. And Liz. we're not constantly trying to time bids. And Absolutely. Yep. yep. So in this process, can we, before we make that decision, talk with a few of these? You can interview. I mean, just like you would interview an engineer or... Yeah. Yeah, a absolutely. And that's what I would expect. I would expect we come back with a list and if you, if you folks have ideas of others, we're going to come back with that list and say, hey, these are some folks that we think that are that are local, that maybe they need to pair for an expertise uh, angle, but, you know, good local contractors that do it. CMAR really, really well. Um, and then a list of folks that are very specific to water and wastewater. Um, that we have experience with that have, you know, that are, that are good from that aspect as well. And look at them, look at kind of their company profile as and say, okay, we want to most certainly get proposals from the, for them and get proposals back and then go ahead through an interview process just like a, a selection process. Yeah, because any of these <coughs> used in the private sector is it just for all the time. Yeah. Private se private sector, uh, that, that's what I was kind of hinting at. Private sector, you are, there's not a lot of design bid build no. ever done in private sector. No. There's some design build and that's, and they're not allowing at that point, at this point, and I totally understand there's some hiccups in design build too. Um, but CM agency and CM at risk is almost always the case. And then only comes down to <clears throat> just getting it, whatever the st structure is, up and operational as quick as possible. It's a dollars and cents thing. For long story short, a majority of the time it comes down to dollars and cents. How quickly can we get it put up? Yeah. And so those are the if you're really trying to speed the process along while still keeping the overall design intact, um, design bid build and CM at risk are the two more popular options. I would say. Mm -hmm. So in our process with where you're at at the design, when would you when would you anticipate that we'd want to start looking at talking with some of these folks? Next couple yeah. of months? Yeah. Now. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Now. Okay. Yep. 
Okay. Yeah, that's why we had a, and, and I thought a working session was the easiest, so you could ask this type of questions and just kind of okay. banter back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the one thing is, it's not like we're not, I mean, we're designing. We've got a team design. <laughs> so, um, so it's not like it's not like we're slowing down to wait for the CM to come on. No, we're just gonna we're gonna get the, as soon as you get them on and under contract and then moving forward. At that point in time, we'll most certainly bring them into the design loop, and then we'll start having those those meetings to go through design, and through selections, and things that they can give input on um, uh, on like a CM agency or CM at risk. So right now, what we'd be tracking is, hey, if you pick design, big build, we're going to go forward and continue to design. If you want to get somebody on earlier, that's kind of your choice. If you want to get somebody on earlier, then it's the CM agency or CM methods. And the nice part with CM at risk is truly the GM. Because CM agency, they're going to be giving you, they're going to be giving you input on what the price is. But truly, they don't have to stand behind the number. Correct. Yep. At really any point. Nope. No. They're just giving you guidance. <laughs> Their foot is not in the door. No. Nope. Travis, I would assume you you've dealt with most of these, at least from design my build and design build. Not not, not CM agency or CM rescue. Yeah. Okay. We're just a little fish. You're <laughs> <laughs> starting to see more of that at risk in the state because a few years ago they didn't allow this. Now that they're letting it go on. Uh, like I said, Harrisburg's doing that project. Pierre's doing a big water project. Sturgis is doing a wastewater project. I think there's a couple of ones out there right now. They're bigger so projects going yeah. up. More on the, so more on the west side, which is kind of smooth. Yeah. 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 yeah, we, not my line of work, but I did that's a negotiated, along with the guaranteed price, you can really kind of put it to them that this is the day that's got to be done, correct? Or is that well, on agency? With, with, with all of them, you're, you're doing that. It's it's just who the comp, who the agreement with is that you're holding. Because design to build, we're still going to have a due date. Right. Right. Literally, we're going to have a completion date and liquidated damages for not hitting the completion. Right. right? And we will have, you'd have that with all of them. that come back and get to that negotiation of if they beat the date, if they do this, if they do that, is that with the kind of Yeah, there's, de there's definitely some negotiations that you do with construction manager, because there's there's also going to be, there's going to be a fee for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's, there's going to be a percentage that, um, you know, like their pre-construction services, there's going to be a cost for that, right? And then there's going to be a percentage that they're going to want to carry in the fact that they have people managing that. What I would what I would say is, I actually, I haven't given you the the proposal on construction service, and, and that was because we wanted to have really this selection determined, because the level of effort on a construction manager to, to really manage to just plans and specs does assist us to, because they're really managing subcontractors, where I will say more on the left side, the design been built, the general contractor is not always managing the subcontractors with the same level of effort. Um, so it, it, does, it does probably take off some of our um, hours that I truly think that we would have to put on a project if it's more on the CMO. It also, it's also the factor of that they're a part of the team earlier on, so they're a part of a lot of the conversations around the overall design and design intent. And so just being a part of some of those conversations, they're able to 
steer the subcontractors or answer specific questions without engaging us at a higher level. And so where our effort would be mitigated because of having them earlier on. So and, and, there's, and there's times that they've, um, you know, they're gonna be looking at design documents throughout the design process, mm -hmm. right? So the construction manager may very well say, hey, I think we can save money by it designing it slightly different. That I think there's an ease of construction. Yes, both work, but there's an ease of construction if we do it this way. Now, design, bid, build, are they really incentivized to give you some of those thoughts? No. Like, oh, okay, that's gonna be a pain in the butt. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna price that accordingly, right? <laughs> and then we'll go through that. But they are they're truly, you know, a part of I call it the three legs of the stool with the construction manager there architecture, engineering, internal team, and owner with our, with our PM that's sitting there and trying to help each, each one navigate those waters to try to get to the best solution. So would you say that, a, that a, the cost for a construction manager individually versus a general contractor might actually be more, that you might actually save more on the whole project by using that construction manager? Or would you say they're similar or? Any construction manager is going to say that they're going to save you <laughs> way more money by by paying them for their services up front because they're 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 helping navigate that decision making process, right? Mm -hmm. I think it varies project by project, but you know they're going to they're going to tell that their services are of value, and I would sit there and say that they their services are most certainly of value, and I have seen it more often than not. With the right construction manager selected, absolutely. Mm -hmm. They add a leg to the stool that is a better decision earlier on that we're, you know, frankly, there'll be times that in a design bid build that a contractor will actually have an idea, but then we're having to redesign something. Like, if we can prevent that and we can design it a way that the, the folks that are actually constructing it want it, think that it's the most economical and think that it's the least effort, then let's do that first, right? So that's why they're, they're going to sit there and say, hey, we're going to provide our So it's more likely that we come in at a, at a better overall dollar amount using the at-risk method? They are going to say that, yes. They're going to say it'll be faster, too. Yeah. Yep. And I, I will definitely say the, the speed is for sure, yeah. Yes. You know, it's it's the, uh, we get to sit on our plans and frankly design and design and design and get everything completely 100% design and then send it out. And that's the first time literally that they're typically looking at a set of plans. Now, most certainly we will share information to get, you know, to get feedback um, occasionally, even in design and build. But they're a part of the process. And to, to John's point that I really do like they're also a part of the decision-making process, right? So when there's something that they're sitting there saying, ah, I don't really like this, you kind of get to sit and say, well, there's plenty of time that you could have provided feedback <laughs> along the design process, but if you really wanted to modify that afterwards. But it's truly trying to get the best solution. I would, unless you wanted to make an $100 million project, I don't know if they'd go after it. Right. And I don't think you want to. <laughs> been around since 1864. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, 
<laughs> yeah, and that's a good that's a good point, Craig made too. Uh, almost all of your construction manager at risk, they're going to hire a significant. Try to go to local because they think it's the most economical. Yeah. You know, those those subcontractors that they're going to bring in, typically they're first going to go local and see what they have. Because they're, those are typically going to be the best prices because you travel and things like that. But they will go to their entire network, which is not always a bad thing either. When when we've got so much going on in the region, um, I don't feel like, at least from our company, I don't feel like every one of the you know the states that at least we work in, there's different levels of busy right now. So. To be able to tap that that network is not a bad thing from a competitive uh, bid environment standpoint. Too. So what's the next one? You tell us which way that you want to go, and we'll. If if you're, I feel like there's more questions on the CM side. I feel like there's more questions that CM at risk. If that's the direction that you are thinking that you want to head, then we would put together a list. Um, and we can most certainly you know, put together kind of a request for proposals to those folks, and then you can get those proposals back, identify the ones, and, and we will stand alongside you folks and, and explain our experiences with them. And even if we don't have experiences with them, we'll check references and things like that, because we want them to be a good partner, of course. Um, and then we would say, okay, if, if we get six of those, maybe we go down, we sit down with, with three of those, interview them, kind of see their approach on the project, um, and then we would go on the negotiations with them on the one that you select. Does that make sense? Yeah. From the, do we need to do this in the next meeting, make a motion to go a certain way, do we just pull each other here and give direction? What's the formality side of things? I don't think there's any real approval process, though, until you get into a contract with somebody. Say, if you're not spending any funds, so mm -hmm. I mean, if it's the consensus that you want to do construction management at risk, they can start, like you said, gathering some names, and right. we can get proposals. And once we get proposals, then it's going to be you're going to have to do a formal motion to accept this person. Well, I would be in favor of looking at the at risk myself. Mm -hmm. Same. Same. How do you feel about it? I, I think that one is probably the best for the city too to go in the long run. It's great here. Yeah, 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 I was yeah. behind this yeah. long time ago. <laughs> talking, <laughs> to these, <laughs> talking to these guys about what they thought about yeah. doing it too. So. Yeah. Well, I think there's a certain level of peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Who you're working with. Um, you know, to be honest, Craig, the chip ceiling is a good example, I think, in my opinion. I wasn't that impressed, and I don't know much about roads. Mm -hmm. Really, I know nothing. Yeah, but nice. I can see areas that are like, like an ice rink, and areas that have rock mm -hmm. in them. And I think they're all supposed to be rocky. I'm not sure, but um, it doesn't look good. So, and that was a little bit situation in bit design. Mm -hmm. And this is a pretty major project. You know, the biggest one of all of them would be involved in. So I'd like to have a peace of mind. We work with somebody, we're getting reputable companies. You know, the manager might be like, yeah, we worked with this company at the project and it was a shit show. And, mm -hmm. you know, yep, they're 10 grand cheaper, but I worked with these guys and I know that they're going to stand behind it. You know, I think that's the kind of response we're going to get out of it. A lot more feedback. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I, mean, I, I, I I think you're spot on. I, I like how you word it. The peace of mind. I mean, you get to actually select a partner that's gonna that's gonna travel along with you. It's not. I feel like sometimes in design bid build, it, it can be really frustrating because it can be who you, who you had to select. And you're like, well, that's not that's not fair. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I like it. So that's our consensus. We should have ISG give us a list of uh, potential candidates, look at their information, go out then for a uh, proposal after that. 
And as of yet, we're not uh, spending any money. So it's really a consensus gets that ball rolling. All right. And do we want to do, like we did the engineer, to do a night where two or three come in? Yeah, I would say. I would say that's our presentation. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I assume that's what they do normally. Like, yeah. Yep. Yep. And sometimes they'll just do a block in the wall hammer them all out, or you can do it on multiple, but you want to interview them separately, kind of walk through them. What I would say is we have, we've, we've been along with an owner on this model a lot, so we'll have some example questions. I mean, yeah. Some example questions that we think you should really right. hammer on and ask, and we, we'll be happy to sit in on those as well and, and yeah. give you feedback on that. Well, you guys are going to make sure we pick somebody. Yeah, we don't want you to make a bad partner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Any other questions or comments for on this section? Make motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We'll readjourn or we'll. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please take roll, please. Okay, Mayor Jones. Here. Brenneman. Yeah. Kiel. Here. O'Hara. Here. Walslager. Here. Matson. Here. And Jazz. Yes. We have a motion to approve the agenda or any additions. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We have a motion to approve the minutes from the 7 5 meeting. Any discussion? Not? We'll vote. O'Hara? Yes. Jazz? Yes. Keel? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Madsen? Yes. Wasslaugher? Yes. We have a motion to approve the bills for payment. Pardon? I had one correction I found okay. after the fact. Yep. Um, for, there was a reimbursement to Laura Johnson for Park Rec Supplies. Okay. It should have been Lori Spees, the new director. I just oh, okay. you got the copied wrong. last year and forgot to update a few of that name. So okay. um, I've since removed that check and replaced it with one to Lori. So the amount didn't change, just that. Just the name change. Yep. Okay, thank you. Motion with that change. If anybody would. Bills as presented with the change as noted. Second. Any discussion? Um, I had a question on the, I can't find it now, on the gas bill. Is that pretty standard with what we were last year or because uh, of our lead, Craig? Is it more? Teresa, do you know? You mean like on the pool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pool, I'm sorry. The lead from the pool. I guess I wouldn't mail it. Hard to tell. Well, and with the price going up, I, say, I don't know how we'd be able to tell. Never mind. Tell, but at but, the year, we certainly can see what we spent this yeah. year versus last year. But the number kind of jumped out when I looked through it. That's what. That's I what. mean, we're going to have to see increased yeah. costs and in heating it because we're pumping in. You know, we're going to have increased water because we have, you know, a lake. Yeah. So we're pumping in more water. We have to heat it more because that's cold water we're pumping in. So right. we need to heat up. We're doing that daily. So. There'll be increased expenses for right. pool with for that week. All right. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion? If not, we'll vote. Wasslock? Yes. Matson? Yes. Bradman? Yes. Keel? Yes. Jazz? Yes. Hoyer? Yes. All right. That gets us to the public input uh, section of the agenda. Five minute time limit per speaker. And if other people need to address, if you're here for a specific issue like the dog park 
only new information to the second speaker. Anybody like to address the council? Say your name, please. B.J. Olson, uh, Hartford resident and new business owner. Uh, nothing too exciting with the dog park, but uh, I'm here for another matter. Uh, All right. Excited to announce that uh, we are, instead of Hartford being on the edge of everything, we're about to be a pioneer in the cannabis industry. Uh, we are opening our store a week and a day from today, uh, April, or sorry, July 27th. Uh, we will be the first medical state-issued cannabis uh, operator in the state. So. I want to thank everybody up here uh, you know, from the council that was involved with uh, this process from the beginning. Uh, really look forward to setting the bar high when it comes to cannabis in South Dakota, really putting Hartford uh, on the map for you know, being compliant, being a, a great, secure place, which will allow the you know, people of the town to, to be able to access the medicine that they need. So, I absolutely thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing this to, to happen. Uh, we have every intention of uh, <clears throat> being good stewards, good, good business owners in our community, and we look forward to helping out in any way, shape, or form that we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Anyone else? All right. If not, we're going to move forward. Special event permit for Buffalo Ridge Brewery. Yeah. Yes, we do. Application. Yep. So, yeah, it's um, an opportunity I feel to collaborate with a new group that uh, just reached, I think, 3,500 members on Facebook. It's the plant, South Dakota plant. Um, traders and gardeners group. They wanted to do uh, a kind of a pop-up uh, plant swap, and um, I let them know that the HDF lot might be a good option, and she connected with Amy about that, and so then she wanted to collaborate with our business as well. So that's why we're asking for the ability to close for street, so that we can, there's going to be a food truck, um, to make a popcorn vendor, and um, they want to be able to come to the brewery and have open container during the event. So it's during the day, um, pretty straightforward. Yep, it's a Sunday, correct? I believe Saturday. Yep, oh, a Saturday. Yeah. Okay. I think it was on a Sunday. Yep, okay, sorry. Yep. But All right. Yeah, I felt like it's a good opportunity maybe yep. to bring some new people to Harvard. Just for you to find stuff in the us. Um, no, not, we'll leave that to be Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any actions for the council? Big one, can you approve? I'll second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. Keel? Yes. Jazz? Yes. O'Hara? Yes. Brennan? Yeah. Madsen? Yes. Wasslocker? Yes. Thank you, Callie. Next up on the agenda, Resolution 2022-7. This is to adopt the discretionary formula for commercial residential structures. Information in your packet. Teresa, anything to add? Um, nothing to add. We kind of discussed this a little bit, you know, last week and go around. And this is basically just passing the resolution to allow the seven-year formula for commercial residential structures, which would be apartment buildings. I mean, that's four more units. Resolution 2022-7 as presented. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Not. We'll vote. Brennan. Yes. Matt. Yes. Wasslock. Yes. Peel. Yes. Jazz. Yes. O'Hare. All right. Next up, 2022-8. Adopt the discretionary formula for commercial and industrial structures. Again. And on the flip Same side, you know, yeah. currently we have the residential 
in residential, commercial, and then industrial all together. Well, we have to pull out the residential, and now this one will just amend it to have just commercial and industrial yep. for the five-year formula. This stays five-year, doesn't go to Yes, this stays, this stays, this stays what we have in place right okay. now. That wasn't changed by the state. Motion to approve resolution 2022-8, adopt discretionary formula for commercial and industrial structure. I'll second. Any more discussion? If not, we'll vote. Oh, Aaron. Yes. Jazz? Yes. Keel? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Matson? Yes. Wasslocker? Yes. All right. That gets us to reports. Yeah, he sent it in, but Matt is not able to be here. No, I are you our guy? Hey! hey. <laughs> What's your name? Connor Borthers. Oh, okay. Assistant Rescue Chief. Okay. So, um, good evening. Uh, the fire department responded to 40 calls for service on the month of June. 15 of those were within the city limits. So, another uh, busy month for us. Um, July, just last night, our EMS training, we covered uh, anaphylactic emergencies, um, infectious diseases, and vaccines. Um, later this month, we're gonna have a combined fire and EMS training for EBOT, for emergency vehicle operation certification. So you'll see our fire, fire trucks kind of out about town, mainly down by the school, going through the corner quarters, testing everybody's ability to, to drive and operate those vehicles as well. So, um, Can any of us come down and jump in and try that? Well, I mean, <laughs> I want to stop you. Oh, no, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Tax fair. He really just wants to honor. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can just talk. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. We can, we can, we can jump you in the, or put you in the passenger seat and give you a okay. tour of the city for you to have a That'd be so, cool. Um, and we did have one other request um, is that we have a new um, liaison yep. from the city council. To the fire department since Mark Monahan is no longer on the council, so it's ready right. to kind of come in and see what we're about and what we're doing. And so, um, did you guys discuss that? I didn't uh, ask any of you prior, I just figured I'd throw it out there if anybody has any interest to be the liaison to the fire department. I would be open to taking that recommendation or volunteerism. We don't like <laughs> what, the, uh, what, what, what do you have them do for what are the expectations of them? You know, historically they would just, um, you know, pop into business meetings here and there. It's kind of um, just somebody who comes around a little bit, gets to know the faces and the names and kind of what we're doing and, and why we do the things we do and ask for the things we ask for. So um, it's pretty involved and so sometimes as well as the community when we come in and say, hey, this is, this is what we're facing, this is what we're doing. So it makes sense to us that sometimes we can convey that to you guys that well. So. I hadn't so, thought about it, but if no one else is interested, you would I like to do it? Yeah, sure. Do we need a vote on that? Or can we just say that Cindy's going to be our lead ASM to the fire department? Do it. <laughs> Not really. Just so it's like minutes, I think. Yeah. Like Just so it's in the minutes. Like yeah. 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 Oh, she won. She won. I would ask for uh, a motion <laughs> and a second from the council to make it official. Motion to. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the city council liaison to the fire department. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? Any more discussion? Any more discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. No opposed, I don't think. So. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Cindy. So, they don't have anything else for me. Yeah, I don't know. Do you have any questions? Um, should I reach out to someone or will someone get a hold of me? Or? Um, one of us will get a hold of you. Yeah, I'll let she Matt know. She says my number or yeah. 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 somebody I'll let Matt know yeah. everything that happened and they will reach out and let you know. Do I have to get voted in there? No, no. <laughs> I think we found it. <laughs> so, you just uh, are supposed to message on her for that and she'll find it. Okay. I don't. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All 
All right. Had a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Thank Thank you. What you do. <laughs> All right. Cambridge Economic Development Director, Miss Amy, Ms. Amy Farr. Thank you, Honorable Mayor Jones. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my information's in the packet. We do have an exciting event tomorrow. It's the Hartford Block Party. Um, we have several vendors that will be out. Uh, we have Buffalo uh, Ridge Brewery that's going to be there, um, Big J's, Midco, um, they're going to hand out uh, free ice cream, Golden West will be a vendor as well, Central States will be there um, handing out backpacks, so some great turnout there. We have a number of sponsors this year, um, I believe there's 24, and then also we have the Good Road Band. Um, this is an opportunity for all of you to attend and meet your fine citizens in the community, so if you could be there, that would be great, we will be announcing you. Um, and giving recognition, I know that's awesome. Mayor, if you'd like to say a few words, we have a little script for you as well. I'm sure I'll say a few words. <laughs> um, so we're excited for that, um, and then the chamber will be selling pizza, um, so we're looking forward to that as well. Um, other than that, the information is in the, the packet here for the chamber. Uh, moving on to economic development, I'm excited to say that um, the 18 acres that was owned by the HADF has been out in the public now through the Sioux Falls business um, documentation. She wrote a story on the black tie components. Trust manufacturer will be going on on that 18 acres. Um, so um, we're excited to have them. We've had several emails come in and you know they're very positive um, and people are appreciative of that. Um, we had the opportunity today to tour the, the dispensary. Very interesting. Um, from what I saw, they had very good turnout at both noon and then the five o'clock. Um, so it's very educational. Um, community guides are now out. If anyone does not have one, they're here. They're great for uh, a new resident to the community. If you have neighbors that are moving in, please let them know that we have those available here. Um, the last thing I have on my list is Dairy Queen is ready to break ground on April 1st at 9 a.m. Or August, sorry. I said April earlier. <laughs> August 1st at 9 a.m. So we're excited to break ground on that venture next. Yes. All right, I see Amy has one action item in here. She's making a request to attend the uh, GOED Deep Dive Conference. It's in the back. Yes, please. But just one night. Yes. Mm -hmm. The conference, I believe, starts at about 11, and then next networking day. in the oh, evening, and then ends around 11 or noon the next day. Yeah. Motion to approve request to attend the GOED Deep Dive Conference. I would second that motion. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. Brennan? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Wasslager? Yes. Peel? Yes. Jazz? Yes. O'Hare? Yes. All right. Anything else, Amy? No, sir. Have you been to the DOS since they redid it? No, it's I think that's going to be yeah, yeah, a big it. selling point. It's really beautiful. I wish we had that on Main Street of Hartford. That's a dance hall, correct? Yeah, they yeah. dance up there. Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. All right. That's an aside. We don't Sorry. dance here? We don't dance. Oh, we dance at the Shrine of Sioux Hall. They have. Uh, we got to get full loose first. Tomorrow you can dance in the streets. Yeah. Oh All right. ISG, City Engineer Report. I'm sure this is going to be <laughs> thrilling. <laughs> so, I hope <laughs> set the bar a little high. Uh, since last meeting, we've actually had a ton of plats, uh, quite a few reviews there um, that are outlined in that since last meeting. Um, but just frankly, a lot. Good job, Andy. There's a lot going on. <laughs> so, so keeping us busy. Um, one on the project updates, the Vance Peterson one. Uh, Merlin Roy's, you know, revisited their construction timeline from, from last week and they were anticipating to do that. We've not gotten any word back then. We'll continue to push that as hard as possible. I know we're, we're all frustrated to get that resolved. Um, What's the holding? Uh, construction company has modified their schedule, but that was last week, right, that they were going to move in and they didn't. I think it was the week of the fourth because I remember last week. I must have been Two weeks ago. Um, they're saying that they're delayed in construction, but we'll keep, we're going to keep pushing on them. There's no consequences. They can just keep putting it off, right? 
not a lot after construction, construction acceptance. Yeah, agreed. It is a private development. I say it, it a private development actually, so we didn't accept anything, anything. but it's yeah. a part. But there's drainage issues there. They right. did not design it to plans. That's what they submitted. So. Or didn't construct it to their design. Yeah, yeah. they didn't construct it, it to the design, yeah. yes. Well, please keep on that if we can. We will. But if, there's nothing ever, right? I mean. Well, at that point in time, well, if you're causing a drainage issue with a downstream neighbor, I mean, we could take some level of, of action. Mm -hmm. but that one, that, Doesn't yeah. it become a civil matter though, between those that are in property owners? Not that the city really is not in the midst of that. John, do that. right? Well, we've done a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What yeah. point do we, I mean, so to your point, we either take it off our agenda, because the only way it's going to ever be removed is if it gets completed. Probably. Or do we just check a box and move on and make it? Because I feel like we've been talking about this for two years. I think you'll have a, another property owner come then to your council meetings. I mean, you're right. It's between two private property owners, but they'll start pushing that. Damn that one. Then yeah. they would, at that point, have to take action. Again. Yeah, they would have to take action. Who would? Uh, the private property. Yeah. The property. I'm getting away off line here, but they didn't build it to the design we told them they had to. That was approved. That we approved. Right. That we approved. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's just go to the next development, and they don't design it the way you approved. Don't construct it the way that it's designed. Yep. Designed. Who cares? Well, I mean, on a development, that's going to be in most of the roads will be the right way. This is a private drive that they had to show a drainage where the drainage is going. Um, where like a new development right. is going to be but still, control over in, in their right. approval was based on what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So if they want more projects approved ever, maybe they should get it fixed. And they have agreed. Yeah, they said they're going to, but they just keep it just keeps getting pushed off. <laughs> the, the developer he's wants it done. It's just the, I'm not doubting the construction. That. The construction yeah. guys are just. It's such a small project, yeah. and just put it off. Yeah, that's a, that's the whole problem. Is it's, it's not. I'm a, also under uh, understand is the developer has sold the property. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, we're we're quite a ways down the road here. So there's a couple of items. How do you enforce it? And how do you fix it? Because we're back to the original, the original uh, developer is who we're after, mm -hmm. not right. the people he sold it to. Right. The original developer is the one we have on the hook, basically, or right. we're trying to keep yeah. on the hook. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's private property, essentially. Mm -hmm. Correct. We can't even go and fix it as a city and build anybody. Right. So if there was an issue in, if it was a development, if there was an issue in the right of way, we could most certainly at that point in time. Right. Correct. If, if, yeah, if they didn't take proactive action to correct. It's your right away. We can correct and most certainly go back at them for the, the, the dollars to correct, to take the correct action. Right. But now it, it is on private property. It's, it's kind of like if uh, somebody's building a new house, one of the developments, the developed, already developed their drainage, but if the new contractor or construction guy goes in there and builds it, does the dirt work, and pushes the water to the neighbors, it's between him and the neighbors. It's not a city. You know, if they show us which way the drainage is going to go when it's supposed to go there, but if they don't do it according to that, then it's typically between the landowners. Okay, fine. So why do we care? That's what I'm hearing, unfortunately. This ain't our problem, but we're talking about it at every other meeting, mm -hmm. or every meeting, getting updates, which is great. But if we can't do nothing about it, I don't know what we're talking about. What you're saying, at some point we just say, this is not gonna be on our agenda, we're done. Or we find a way to, if this happens again, there's something we can do about it, right? Mm -hmm. 
that's my that's my feeling is we're discussing something we have no control over that is an issue for the city so maybe we need to look at putting some control some in a situation like this yep yep that says if you don't follow the approved design you have to finish it by 60 days i'm just making stuff up and if you don't it's going to cost you 500 bucks a day for not correcting the problem. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, if I'm the developer, I'm going to be after Merlin and Royce to get their fun out there and fix it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the developer might want it fixed, but it ain't costing them nothing. The city can't enforce it. Merlin and Royce is just going to do it when they're passing through towns, in this case, if that's who the, con or the payment company is going to be. So I think we need to be a little proactive planning for the future to prevent this. Something we can discuss some other time. But otherwise I can see. Now we spend essentially hundreds of dollars in engineering fees for the constant to chase to chase, calls, yeah. Yeah. to chase it down. Yeah. Right. So even if they had to pay your fees as a penalty for not following the, the blueprint or the design or whatever you want to call it, it would be something. Right. It'd be something. Yeah. Just something to hold them accountable. We'll look through that. All right. Uh, six and one roadway reconstruction, sanitary sewer, manual services are all done on phase one, six to uh, four to six. Um, trims have been backfilled, except excess soil is taken off of there. Uh, Bill Zacharias will be installing the sub drain uh, behind the back of curb. Uh, Mid Americans actually relocating that gas main. If you remember the north portion was already going to be relocated along uh, 6th Street um, or al along Munt um, but when we when we actually pulled up the pavement on the south portion it is immediately underneath the pavement like, alarmingly immediately underneath the pavement so um, met with uh, Mid-American they were super good to work with said yep yeah, we don't like where it's at we know if you start dragging stuff over top of it it's not going to be good for us um, so they are relocating that in the boulevard as we speak. Um, and then Zacharias will be coming right behind them with the sub drain and then moving forward with the rest of the, the roadway work on phase one. We did have a couple of questions on the landowners regarding yards, not surprising. Um, but restoration is included in the plans and completed once, completed once the roadway for each phase is actually installed. So any, I know that's an active one and it's a reconstruction, any input that you've received from Public in regards to that construction. Chris, anything? Uh, okay. So good. Good. I had a little bit of. I just came up today. Got an email from Miguel, and, and we're not there yet. But there's a genie circle. And she has concerns that when you get there, as far as parking, because there's only the one way in and one way out. You know, in yep. genie circle. Yeah. Because it's a dead end. Yep. Because yep. then she's wondering, is Mont going to be shut down? You. Know, Let's shut down, they're shut down, where they're going to park is, is, because Highway 38 then is to the north, and so I said I could have a little discussion sure. with. We, <laughs> we have opened up a little bit of space at, in the Brown Jug, in our parking lot, we've told quite a few neighbors there that where to park um, and where not to park. So okay. I think I could probably have I mean, 15 maybe. vehicles there, I mean 12 to 15 vehicles there. So I'm just asking yeah, people that's to leave their right. number in like the dash or something so we can not have to tow a vehicle if it's in the wrong spot or something. Um, Is that standard parking fee apply? <laughs> we should. <laughs> <laughs> we should. Yeah. Yeah. Parking with I just read that. I just read that. Yeah. I just read that. Throw that in. Buy, buy a six pack of condoms and send your in. <laughs> Well, I know we have the one document, the one phase document that we had put together. We had shown them some of the areas that we can park, some of the ones that were more critical. So we can work on that with our, our, our weekly updates so that they're at least in front of them. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So, because, yeah, they're probably because they're two cars, but also probably. Yeah, the bottom is just necessary. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> but overall, I think they've done they've done a really nice yeah. job today. I mean, keeping it, keep it cleaned up behind them and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, the uh, gas main was an interesting one to uncover with where it was at. Um, 
I've got a, a little di difference in regards to where the water main was relocated on the connection, so we did a little bit of modification there, and then did find a sanitary sewer service that was going through a storm sewer, which is always uh, an interesting one to uh, uncover, but that was corrected. So, um, but good things. I, th I think they're doing a pretty nice job. <coughs> Our water tower painting. Uh, they're, they've moved back their move-in date to September, but they anticipate it'll take between 40 to 55 days to complete that. Um, and we, we definitely have uh, some additional time there. So, um, water resource recovery facility. We we talked about quite a bit of that, but the, over the the delivery. Um, but we have preliminary layout for the sewer curtain under a review. So all of our staked last week and geotech will be on site. Uh, so continuing to push a lot of that information forward in regards to the sign and PNIDs are coming together really, really well. Um, and I know there is, uh, I think there was just a, there was just a regionalization meeting last night um, and, and some discussion that's taking place on that as well. Uh, bike and rec trail made to Vader. There's a, that's on hold at this point in time, but Remember, we have quite a lot of time next year to actually get that uh, constructed as well, but that home is being sold. So we want to have a receptive individual to, to discuss the, the easement. Storm shelter, as indicated, I know that there's action to be taken on that. Highway 38 water main extension, that's in, in design as we speak. And the Western Avenue interchange uh, approach is actually uh, traffic counters uh, in the field, and we're going to have some uh, information coming together on our traffic report. That'll take about four weeks. The other item that you have in front of you is four, six a month, uh, pay request number one, which is mainly for that sanitary sewer work and some, some removals. Um, uh, in, this, in the services and regards to sanitary sewer, and then quite a few, uh, quite a bit of stored materials that we have confirmed as well that they have on hand. Um, so that uh, pay request number one is in the amount of 294000 $730.20, and, and we would recommend approval of pay request number one. All right, any action from the council on that pay request? Just so that we get an accurate one, and what I mean by that is when you look at that contractor's application for payment number one. Line item nine, balance the finish plus retainage. Oh, sure. Yep. Any discussion? or unfortunate to have them basically first. Um, we had a lot of issues. We walk, I spent pretty much a week walking with them and making sure, trying to keep things as good as we could. Um, they usually they usually go to Sioux Falls first, but they want to start on this side because they've got both the county and all the cities work um, they're moving across. So we were they did a little bit in Salem. They said that was a disaster from my herd. Um, and then we have next. I did put together a list of items to be addressed. <clears throat> they are going to come out and uh, fog seal Ninth Street, um, two cul de sacs, and they have eyebrow because in them they did a lot of hand raking, trying to get a level off, and that's a product. You have about a 
minute to minute and a half to get it worked up or it's done. And if you work it after that, it causes that rough dry area, so it's selling the chip. Um, <clears throat> there's the bump on fighter, two bumps, double, double bump on fighter. There's like four bumps on fighter. <laughs> <laughs> I drive. Uh, you can tell people that drive on fighter. We got yeah. some new speed bumps there. And the stuff, I mean, it's rough. It's kind of like it was last year, it's a little rougher because of stone size, but it is starting to pack down in areas that is looking better. But um, like I said, they, they have a lot of work to figure out yet on that. And we're Craig, this is probably minor, but along the, in the gutters, like either tape or, <laughs> yeah. there's crap laying everywhere, every street they, they I drove, okay. I drove them all, I was just making sure before I send this over to it, because I talked to Amy, who's the project manager or whatever on the site. Um, talk to you about the stuff that we need to get addressed. Yeah. I wanted to see if you guys had anything else that I didn't have on my list. A lot of it's the cleaning up stuff, then the fog seal, um, yeah. bumps on fighter, uh, things like that. And then I'm going to send out a thing and get it corrected so as much as we can. I mean, as one of those deals, like I said, a little bid, we were supposed to you know, be accepting it. So. So I think I got to correct myself. I think I said chip seal. It's actually slur slurry, slurry seal. seal. Yep. That's what I meant when I yep. talked to the previous one. Is there a way to document that so in the future they are a little bit we can reject it? We could. Um, here's the thing with they're the only local one around. Um, it's, you know, Astle. Uh, they wanted, they thought it was a nice lucrative thing. Maybe they won't, maybe they'll sell their stuff and get out of it. I don't know. Otherwise, you got uh, a couple down south. Missouri and uh, Arizona, I think Arizona, and then one out of Minneapolis area. Sioux Falls is really pushing to get these guys comfortable and get them going good because they're local. They're hoping that we'll keep the prices down. Sioux Falls is not happy next year. They're going to put up their specs no matter who it is. They go to Sioux Falls first and they have, they have to do Sioux Falls first before they come over to the smaller towns. So that will help, but doesn't help yeah. this year. I mean, the product. It's 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 not good. I mean, the product itself is good. The workmanship has to be right. Yeah. So, like I said, it's I hopefully some of the renovations are going to do will make it appear better. You know, we so, did it last year. I don't remember. Intermobile wasn't it? Aztec no. out of uh, oh no no Missouri. No, no Aztec out of Minneapolis yeah. area. The year before it was Intermountain, Intermountain and then it was Missouri Petroleum before that. So yeah. we've had all this is. The yeah. four of them are all, and we've had right. all four of them now. So. Right. <clears throat> so if that's the spec that Sioux Falls writes, could we as outlying communities partner up and bring our own contractor in as opposed to just being, you know, getting them when we get them? Um, I don't think the rest of the town is going to because uh, <coughs> Sioux Falls for, like, mobilization, it, they base, <coughs> excuse me, they base their mobilization what they charge the cities by percentage of what you're doing for the work. So Sioux Falls is paying like 60% of the mobile. Okay. We've got 10%, Brandon got 10%, a lot of the towns are only paying 5%. Right. Um, so I think with Sioux Falls doing a majority of the work, that's what's keeping it down. Sure. There is another, I mean, the class three is what this is, it's rougher because it's got the bigger rock in it, which gives you a little thicker surface, more wear area. Uh, there's a class two, Type two, um, it's smaller rock, it's thinner. Um, it does go down smoother. Um, the county does that on their roads. Um, the cities that are trying to get up these roads to last another 10 to 12 years out of them, where I think you're going to get that out of with thicker rock. Like I said, you got more of a wear surface. You know, it just like I said, if you get the right workmanship, it's going to be a lot better. I, it's going to hold up. It's not going to wreck a roll or anything like that. But it just looks terrible. Mm -hmm. so, and the first snow plow, you know, that hits it is going to peel it off. We will probably have some bumps, you know, like where they'll jump up on us, where they'll hop up, you know, just yeah. a bunch of little spot of ice that will build on it. Some that will scrape off, I mean. So we will keep a close eye on it for next spring and see if we peeled it off. I mean, for pull that out. But so we just say that's okay, huh? Like I said, I've got a bunch of list items of things they got to correct and we'll hopefully get it taken care of. There's, you can't, once it's down, before we hear it, it'll probably be a mill to take off. 
important. Now it sets up and it sticks down that tight. I know Sioux Falls guys are out here quite a few different times and we're not happy either with it. And I'm thinking there's going to be, a, it's going to be probably the same workmanship in every town and there will be towns that will not get theirs done this year. They're just that, they're not going to get their all the work done. They took two weeks here and it should have been three days. And Sioux Falls has got 30 cul-de-sacs and it took them about a day on each cul-de-sac. So, and they're supposed to be done in Sioux Falls August 15th, I think. Oh boy. And they haven't started yet. So, yeah, it's like I said, I'll, I'll put together a list, get it taken care of, and get it addressed, and see what happens from there. So. Um, oh, also with the slurry seal, uh, I seen tonight at Hartford Happings about the arrows on Mickelson. That is the new standard. So. They, somebody posted on there that, oh, I see they got the, the arrows done, but they're in the wrong spot. They, where they put them at is the new standard. It's the same way on the rest of Nicholson going the other direction. So if you see that, it's it's right. It's just, so. Um, going on report. Uh, future wastewater faci or facility. I did uh, get a hold of Travis actually called me back today addressing this DOT. Um, they are going to uh, look at that approach, um, what we propose to put it, and he is going to get back to me on that the next few days. So he said, don't get your hopes up too high, but they will readdress it. So we're going to look at it. Um, cool, water, big, huge water leak. Um, we're going to have to try to get, so hopefully, we make it through it. It doesn't get any worse. Um, Starts, it looks like it's getting worse. We're going to probably dig out in that area and try to find that line and be ready to um, tie into it quick and get uh, bypass that leak or shut the pool down. It's a lot of water going, a lot of chemical use, a lot of heat. Um, it's broke somewhere underneath the concrete slab in the chemical building. And it's more than enough in there. So um, it's probably gotten a little worse. But it's, I haven't looked at the actual water usage, just to compare it and see from day to day basis if it's getting worse or if it's staying the same. So yeah. I'll look at that tomorrow. But we'll see what's going on. Because I think Neil or you know, <laughs> Craig, you've been throwing about fifteen to twenty thousand gallons extra in there yep. to keep her up to level. Yeah, at least a week. How many gallons are in that pool? One hundred fifty thousand. I found out that I was uh, Neil. <laughs> Neil uh, happened to be down there one day, and they were all giving me crap in the pool about how much how much water does this thing hold. So Neil happened to step out. I said, "Hey Neil, what's this hold? 150,000." I turned to them all. I said, "Holds 150,000." <laughs> and then he caught me after I got done out of the pool, and he says, "I've been doing this 21 years. You're the first mayor that's ever asked." So I got an attaboy from Neil for being the only mayor, first mayor that's ever asked how many gallons it holds. Uh, going on with uh, sports complex, I did a walk around at all the fences out there that American Fence put in. Uh, I did send them a punch item list to get taken care of. We got our bill and I told them they weren't getting paid until we get the items taken care of out there. So, and they sent one back and emailed CC Teresa um, and their general manager and a couple of the guys that are out to work and so hopefully it'll get taken care of soon. And that's all I got unless somebody has something for me. Is this Alan's last week? Yeah. Friday. Right. Yep. Friday. And you started advertising that? Yes. I guess I could bring up the dog park quick. We do have probably 70% of the posts set. Um, we should have the rest of them set this week yet. Um, shorthanded, big time shorthand right now. So um, but I, we should have, like I said, we're going to pick up some more supplies. Hopefully we can start putting the bottom rail in and get the rest of the posts set and we're going to start hanging fabric next week. So, so we're at Awesome. Do we have an estimated date? I know people have been asking. Um, Troy and Dean and Larson asked me because they got some on Facebook some pie. I assume probably early fall, I think. Yeah, we should have that. Okay. Sooner the better. We're going to try, like I said, we're just going to keep pushing on to get 
much of it couldn't be done. So. All right. Two questions, I guess, since we're talking about it. Is there going to be gates for you to get your equipment in and out? Yep. How, like how wide? Uh, we're going to be, they're eight foot gate, but it's only going to be about seven foot open. And we're going to put them on a roller so we can roll them back and forth so that way that they can't. Swinging gates, you never keep them tight. Dog can get thrown this way here, roll tight up against it, and there won't be any clearance for dog to get out. And we'll chain it with lock. And is there plans for features inside the. Yep. We, um, any more trees? <clears throat> We kept um, some of the old slide parts that was a yeah. pool for like a tube for dogs to run through. Um, Sioux Falls, the one they had there, they did have, um, they actually brought in some huge logs and set them for dogs to run up on. So we're going to grab a couple of those, set them in the tube for the We have a few of those. Yep. Yeah. So. Okay. I've been talking with um, Nina Larson too. You know, this is a Girl Scout project. Yeah. And the whole project is project. And so. Their troop has been raising funds too, and they're wanting to get together to get some features to put in there as well, and to help out with doing additional items in there. And I'm actually going to meet with them next week, I believe, and kind of talk about what they can do. The outline looks great. I mean, it looks like it's it's coming. So, like I said, we've spent a lot of time designing it so a dog cannot get out. It's actually another fence it's going to be buried six inches below the ground. And it'll be four and a half foot high, where the ones in Sioux Falls are only four foot yeah. without anything buried. So it should be should be good. So. Roughly how many square feet is that? Um, <clears throat> square feet? I can't tell you for sure. I can tell you how many feet of fencing we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a there's a hundred or thirteen hundred feet of fencing roughly. Uh, there will be about hundred and fifty in the divider part of it. So. <laughs> it's it's pretty close to the one the size of the Sioux Falls one at uh, Family Park. So okay, pretty close to that. Yeah. Okay, that's the one we kind of looked at and measured out and kind of went off of that a little bit. So. And then all up. there's no 90 degree corners in it because uh, that's where right. the dog can get trapped. Right. So everything's offset. So yeah. that's why it looks goofy and nothing squared up. So easier to mold through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amy. When you're ready, the chamber would be happy to provide a ribbon cutting for this opening of it. I'll let you know what day I'm on vacation. All right, anything else for Craig? Thanks, Greg. Yep. Next up, Karen. Yeah, Welcome back from vacation. Yeah. My report is in the packet, so I have nothing to add to it. So, I guess we got to Did you send that separate, right? Yes, yeah, yeah it's a separate one. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I did it on Monday. Questions or comments for Karen? If not, we'll move on. Teresa. Um, got my report. Um, Dave and Craig kind of gave you the update on the projects that we have going on. Uh, Rebranding, we are trying to set up a meeting to look at locals either Monday or Tuesday of next week. I'm trying to get our small group to together with that, and so we'll look at a few of those and keep moving forward with that process. Um, the DOT study for Highway 38, um, like I said, they were going out for requests for proposals for a firm to do that study. Um, from what I understand, they've got four proposals back already, and um, they're due by the end of this month, so then once we get all the proposals in, we'll review them and start that process, too. Um, and I did attend a meeting with FEMA today in Sioux Falls to kind of go over what we need to do to basically uh, recoup our costs or submit our costs for the May 12th storm event that we had. So um, got signed up on their portal to, um, you know, get the city of Hartford on their list and we'll start submitting 
than our expenses and costs with that. Mainly we'll have, um, basically, cleanup and debris is gonna be our biggest thing. You know, our man hours, our time, you know, stump removals, what we had to take down for trees. Um, we keep track of all of that. The items of the city that got damaged, like our welcome signs, um, you know, the fencing at the different parks, the ball field, um, all that is covered under our insurance. Um, they will go cover our deductible because you know we don't get reimbursed for that. So we have a $2,500 deductible, so we can include that in our FEMA, you know, reimbursement. Just everything else goes through our insurance company. So, um, so we I will start working on submitting that stuff, and then hopefully we should hear something back next month. I think it's all due from FEMA for that. Um, and then, probably the last thing I want to point on my report is that the 2023 budget is coming up next month already and so we're kind of starting to work on that and figures here um like to and you know, later on we're going to set the date for that budget if you guys have anything that you think we should consider or you want me to look at you know pricing or costs is something that we, you want to discuss at the meeting you think the city should look into please let me know um i have a few things on my list that i'm kind of looking into for your consideration but if there's like I said, something you think of, you know, let us know so we can kind of research it and have that information for you guys at budget time to look at. Um, Teresa and I talked 23rd of August. Yeah, that seems. Yeah. Is that the... It is an agenda item, so. We'll... Oh, that's coming up. Yeah. Never mind. We're going to talk about that. All right. A couple minutes, so. yeah. Anything so, else, Teresa? I Any questions for Teresa? I want to go back to Craig. I got just thought of something. Sure. So, how's our chipper? What, is he giving you any idea of? He hauled that? three loads out last week, and I, I think he hauled one load Monday. Okay. So he's plugging away finally on it. Okay. It looks like it, the, I mean, it looks like the pile started to yeah, go down and find yeah. out. I haven't heard if he's going to be back. I'm sure he'll be back this week though. Yeah. Do some more. I think it was, yeah, it was yesterday to haul the load out. Okay. I didn't see him today though, yesterday. Okay. All right, move on to old business, discuss, review, FEMA grant for our sports complex building. We discussed this a couple times and uh, the Park and Rec Board now has came with their recommendation, correct? Yes, yeah, so basically, you know, we know since we first submitted our grant application to FEMA for this storm shelter slash restroom concession stand, um, costs are where's the new significantly. So um, we have talked with FEMA. We can do uh, an edit to our scope of work, which we can basically we submit. You know, we can do changes in design. You know, changes in cost estimates or whatnot, and we submit that to FEMA. Of what we think is a truer, you know, design number on that um, that they can consider, and then hopefully get more funding from them. Um, that's one of our choices we can do with this building or we can take budget money we already have set aside maybe add more to that and design our own building that doesn't have to be the FEMA specs um, to erect something out of sports complex. So that's basically what the park board talked about. Their recommendation is to edit our scope of work, let ISG edit that scope of work, see what they come back with, and then see if we submit it to FEMA again or do something else. I'd say at this point we don't want to. We just do not walk away from the grant money. We don't have to, but we might as well try to maximize our grant. Correct. And I think the ROI on a hundred ten thousand dollar investment for us. Um, well, yeah, to get probably possibly get a million dollars for a hundred and ten. Yeah. Right. I mean, we first, uh, you brought up last last meeting. Right? Kick this can, kick this can. Inevitably, if we redesign it, shrink it down, it's never going to be big enough. It's just proceed. I, I don't want to redesign it. I want to build it as as planned. And just maybe um, submit an edit of cost. Like we're we're going to have to figure out how to budget for it as a as a council or as a as a as a team. But I mean, like we talked about that math, 300 people at a storm shelter when we're having a tournament out there isn't big enough. I mean, already. It's just 
you never build a big enough. And I, I think we should build a really nice facility out there. So what are we saying? Heard of the group. So what are we saying? Do we want to have them resubmit? Do we want to just go with what we have and build? Or what do we want to do? Just the resubmit the price. I, I think we just need to have ISG redo the cost figures on it and make sure that benefit to cost ratio comes out okay. And then, you know, we'll take a look at that and then resubmit it. And to try to get more money to feed okay. them. I mean, if, if you guys come back with a number that's out of the question, yeah. right? Then, then we I mean, happen, we, yeah. but when we're talking about a number we don't even know of, we're scared yes. of a, a hypothetical number. Right. Like, let's get a real number and then, yeah. And I think we should allow ISG to go ahead and, and take a look at the plan. You know, come up with a new cost estimate for us, and then, yep, yeah, exactly. see if well, that's something. Ideally, that's something that can move through FEMA since it's a. Modification rather than a new submission. They, they say it should only be four to six months for just editing your scope of work. So we could so hopefully we'll be ready to bears and be ready right away next spring. Right, right. Because right. right. it's not going to get built this year anyway. Right. We're just resubmitting same plan, different cost. Pretty yeah, just updating it. It's a win win. Yeah, and part of the part of the issue with the original application is the actual application only had a capacity of 125 listed, but when they submitted the, the layout for the actual building, they had specified 300 on it. So FEMA awarded money based on the 125 capacity, but in their award letter, they said the building had to hold 300. So there's there's the discrepancy that they were fixing. Um, we worked through the benefit to cost ratio, you know, kind of preliminarily with CCOG. And if you up that, same criteria and everything, but it's of 125 to 300, um, it appears the project will be viable. What's the formula? How many square feet per person? Uh, I believe it's five square feet per person. And they can't think or no? Huh? Do you think or no? I believe. I'm, I have to we can talk about it. I'm, yeah. I, 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 I'm not being a rude. I'm just, what is it? I've heard it's three or five. So I'm, I'm questioning which one is it? I can talk to her for I, I just like to know yeah. yep. how that math works out because maybe we need to go over here. I don't know. But then we gotta resubmit the whole plan. Right. I think so okay. But never mind. Yeah, I think the better. Right. Yeah. I think if we get it to design to the three hundred, update those cost figures, we can take a look at that and then get it resubmitted to FEMA. Hopefully four to six months next spring we could start a building. Do we need a motion to that? Yes, I would like to, because it will be a cost of ISG. Would you like to make a motion to get a new costing on the plan as drawn and submit the fee? Second. Any discussion? We have detailed estimates, like, or we just grabbing a number out of the air? There are detailed estimates, yeah. Most certainly, there's a detailed estimate that we put together to come up with the 1.3 or 1.5. Anything else? Any other questions? Not? Oh, oh, O'Hara. Yes. 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 Peel. Yes. Frederick. Yeah. Madison. Yes. Wasslock. Yeah. All right. So that's all old business, new business. First one is downtown Hartford's request for utilizing budget money for additional downtown lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Yep. Different hat this time. Um, so yes, I met with Craig. We had a look around the street there, and um, we kind of determined that in order to do any permanent lighting, we really need um, the uh, the future development on the vacant lot there to be in current. So we don't want to put anything permanent in that is just going to be in the way or going to be having to get tore out, dug out, moved for um, other development to happen. And so um, we kind of looked at what our options would be and the idea with putting in the solar lighting here would be that this is a, an improvement that we can make today that would help um, safety feature, adding more light downtown. It's another nice aesthetic um, 
future to improve the district but also um, the fact that we know that there is going to be development on that corner at some point hopefully in the near future and once we eventually want to do more work on first street or permanent lighting that would um, potentially be in that area this solar lighting could then be placed down main um, as our plan has been in the past so future or excuse me past budget request was specifically for more lighting um, on main avenue and so this fits into the scope of what we've asked and, um, for the specific budget money uh, it also is um, like i said it's, it's a multi-use item that then can be sidewalk um, going west by the bank that'll all be set the sidewalk like it is down main. This other one will have just off the curb about the same distance off the curb line as the rest of the water. So it won't be the sidewalk on the going to the east. Be on the sidewalk. Are these the same lights that are currently on Main Street? Yeah. yeah. But this request is not for today it's not for like the Said, go ahead with this, we'll step it off, measure it, and you know, we can see if it's going to get light in that area. If we have to move it, maybe five extra feet or something like that, just to try to get it into the. We do know that there's been issues with lights between still red lights, knocking them out, and, right. and getting them sunk. So, so. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah, that would be more than adequate because most of that's just a matter of 
uh, kids make the balls grow up, grow up near there. So. Are there any safety concerns about road traffic and the lights being there? I mean, this is just installation. Not like we have other lights. You're saying there might be the roadway a little bit. Are there any safety well, it'll concerns be, that it's, anyone has? Yeah, it'll be the same distance as what these arms are here. We okay. have to we space those. I can't picture it all in my head. I'm yeah. sorry. I need to go look yeah. at them. Yeah. We spaced them so that they would line up with the deep side of you know when they pull in so they're not coming up by the bumper and hitting them so they got we got them spaced according to the uh, mark or the parking area sure. these other ones are going to be you know maybe a door so the person you have to watch where they park the parallel park um, as far as a clear zone these do it will break away if they get hit i mean so they like they're i mean they've got three of them breaking just the wind so aren't mm -hmm. the sidewalks narrower on first? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to want to measure that just to make sure we are not getting any ADA issues right. too. And the way that slopes got on the, the one on the first on the brewery side, on the north side, that's that sidewalk slopes down. That's why. Well, yeah. and that's why we talked about if we need to dig any of that out, the brewery is going to right. accommodate that. Yeah. This way, you keep them in a place where they're not going to get ran over by the snowplow. Yeah, we get a little more information for next meeting. Yeah, let me do some more measuring and stuff like that and do some checking on that because I do, I know the sidewalk is a little narrower. I only know it's narrower on that yeah. side street, but as long as we, like I said, see for ADA as far as getting back. So. Yeah, I'm not opposed to the lights. I just want to check a few boxes out first. first yeah, I'd I'll say do we, we should, uh, maybe we should hold this and we should move this over to the Does that go, so there's some residential areas, you know, we talked about not wanting a light along the bike trail in our backyard. How do these, what, what would that last set be? How close to residence this? The idea is that it wouldn't go any further than the alley on either direction. So there'd be whatever you want. Before the next house, before right. the house is started on the other side. And there is a street light there, mainly right on the house. So it wouldn't be any right. different. It wouldn't go that far, is what I'm saying. Yeah, there's a street light on first. I know it says a street light probably on first. And the Almont and the alley maybe. Yeah. The rudimentary picture is just an idea. So, uh, <laughs> to, to let you know, <laughs> kind of an idea. Yeah. It is, I, 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 I was thinking maybe you must have had uh, yep. David put this yeah. down. <laughs> Man. All right, I think we'll move this over to the next meeting. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Gally. What's the problem? Set the 2023 budget meeting date and time. We talked about August 23rd. Does that That's seem to work for everybody? That's still a Tuesday, but we don't have any other council. There's an extra Tuesday in there, so we keep meeting days on Tuesday. Yay, there's an extra Tuesday in there. We we'll, we'll want to fill it for you, huh? <laughs> so one free Tuesday of the month. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. Now you're really looking. Killing, yeah, we're killing Cindy's golf hobby. Uh, 23rd, does that seem to work for everybody? Yeah. And time, do you want to start at uh, 7 or do you want to start early? 6. 6 too early? 6 would be nice. Yeah. Usually we cover a lot of stuff. Those are the time. How long are we going to be here? A couple hours. Yeah. Let's go to the 23rd at uh, 6. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. All right. Are we going to have enough time to uh, kind of have an idea about this Swanson Park project? Oh, I'd say we're going to know about that by the next. Well, we won't know what FEMA says, but yeah, 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 correct. Yeah. 
but we'll know what their fit, we'll know what their number is in case we need to make a contingency. I will here. Same on the lead tracks. We go on the whole week. Oh, yeah? Oh, there's the 20th to right the 22nd. Gee, you wish you are gone all the time. <laughs> I think he's retired. Uh, yeah, when he listens to his message. And five days. Yeah. When do we need, when do we need to have it done? <laughs> We need to have it done by the end of So basically, for the first Tuesday in September, we have to have first reading the ordinance. So we have to have this budget meeting before that first Tuesday in September. So we push it to the end of the, the last Tuesday. Is that a planning? But that, that's a, yeah. But I guess that could be a reschedule. I said we could reschedule that if need be. You guys can do it without me, but I'm not here to turn I don't know what the rule is. Does everybody have to be at that one? Yep. Only the newest member. I'm just throwing that out. You, you don't have to. There are con there are consequences. Monday. 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 How about the fifteenth? Is that a P and Z? Fifteenth. Yeah. We kind of like to have a few extra days if possible. <laughs> Is that really push it and put it all together. What's yeah. About Mondays. Are you leaving on the 20, Mondays and 27th? 20th. 20th? No, it's 20th and 25th. How about a Wednesday night? How about the 17th? Yeah, okay. how, how about the 29th? Uh, Monday, Monday the 29th? I will be gone the 29th. Oh, you'll be gone the 29th. Okay. How about the 17th? That's even earlier. That's really pushing. They didn't want the 22nd. So does Tuesday the 30th work for people? We could we could move the PNC. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, he's not going to be here. I guess. Are you all, oh, all week? Oh, you're all week. Yeah. Two, two, two. Yeah, I'm I'm gone that whole week. All you know. Sure. I have to show you on September 6th. Good turn. It is a good time. It's a good golf golfing. Well, we may have to do it. Um, September 5th, home can we time? No, that's not enough time. That's Labor Day. You're not going to do it on Labor Day anyway. I'd say we should do it the 30th. Sorry, Jake. All right. I'm heartbroken. <laughs> Does that work for everybody else Tuesday the 30th? It's great. It's not Chris's anniversary. Yeah, Michael. Yeah. Or maybe not. The 23rd anniversary. <laughs> 23rd year anniversary. Yeah, we don't want to stay away from that. All right, so 30th? 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty painless. All right. Uh, review public work assistant job description. Do this on the agenda. This is what we're currently advertising with. It's the same um, job description we did when last time we advertised when we hired Alan. The only difference is under minimum qualifications. I did add a line, just had some verbiage that you know preference will be given to anybody with um, certification, water and wastewater certification. Makes sense. Job. Um, we've got one application so far. <laughs> um, we are going to put it in. The municipal league book, which goes out to all municipalities and like public works directors or whatnot, so maybe we will hit a pool of people there. Yeah. I don't know. You, you know how the hiring environment is, so we will just, and we're advertising it to, you know, until filled. Remember, so we would just keep advertising right. it. Do something with them? No, no, I, I just wanted to give you a chance for you guys to look at it and if you did want any changes or yeah. input. Is there anything so. anybody seen that they wanted to but change or address and but Teresa and I talked about if we could find some this would be a great opportunity for us to find somebody that had their and some of their uh, wastewater water <coughs> certifications that was really great. Mm -hmm. 
from Turkey. Because at some point, that's going to be a. All right. Now, I don't know if it's legal, but can I ask our Eagle Scout if he has something that we need? You just need something signed or something? Oh, no. okay. Then we can just do that after the meeting. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that Casey, you know, I didn't want to break too many of them. <laughs> just, tell Tom, just tell Tom not to worry about it. <laughs> He hasn't been here for a while. So um, we, I, you know. we do got a short executive, just a couple yeah. of days. All right. All right. So somebody want to make a motion to put us into the executive session? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I'll come over there and see you for a second. I'll get you All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Yep. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.